In the frozen trenches of World War I, where soldiers lived knee-deep in mud and shivered through nights colder than steel, a quiet invention changed the way they endured the war. It wasn't a new rifle or a piece of armour. It was a stove, a tiny, collapsible piece of equipment that could boil tea, heat rations and even dry socks in a world where every spark of warmth meant survival. This was the trench stove, a tool so efficient, reliable and ahead of its time that it outperformed some of the fancy modern backpacking stoves we use today. Yet, after the war ended, it was almost completely forgotten. Today, we'll uncover how this ingenious little heater worked, why it saved lives, and how you can still use the same principle to make fire-efficient, fuel-saving stoves in your own survival setup. By the winter of 1915, the Western Front had turned into a static nightmare. Troops were trapped in trenches that flooded with freezing water, surrounded by mud so thick that even the simplest task became a battle. Hypothermia, trench foot and hunger became just as deadly as artillery. Fire was rare, smoke gave away positions and wood was soaked beyond use. But soldiers still needed heat, even for a few minutes, to brew tea, cook tinned meat, or dry their uniforms before the next attack. This brutal necessity drove an explosion of field innovation. Soldiers and engineers alike began crafting portable stoves from whatever they could find. Tin cans, shell casings, food tins, and even discarded ration boxes. Out of this chaos came one of the most ingenious survival tools of the entire war, the trench stove. The genius of the World War I survival stove lay in its simplicity. Most fires waste more heat than they produce because the flame burns too quickly and the air escapes. Soldiers learned that if they could control the airflow by feeding oxygen from the bottom and letting heat circulate through a narrow chamber, they could get a steady flame that required far less fuel. One of the most famous examples was the Tommy Cooker, a small, foldable stove issued to British troops. It used solidified alcohol fuel and a simple metal frame to concentrate heat on a single point, enough to boil water in just a few minutes. But you know, when supplies ran low, soldiers built their own from food tins and clay. They would punch holes near the base for air intake, create a chimney hole at the top, and burn anything that could hold a flame wax, dry paper, twigs, or even bacon grease. German and French troops had their own versions. The Germans called theirs Esbit, or solid fuel stoves, a concept so effective it's still used by NATO forces today. The French developed a similar setup using paraffin tablets. Across all armies, the idea was the same small, concealed, fuel-efficient heat, that didn't smoke or draw attention. Modern camping stoves rely on pressurised gas, complicated valves or high-end fuels that don't always work in freezing or wet conditions. The World War I trench stove, by contrast, used physics instead of technology. The key was the chimney effect. Air drawn in from the base rose through the burning chamber, feeding the flame while creating suction that kept smoke low. This natural airflow meant it could burn almost anything. Soldiers used spent rifle cartridges filled with paraffin wax, dry grass mixed with oil, or rolled cardboard soaked in fuel. It wasn't fancy, but, you know, it was versatile. The design was so efficient that a handful of twigs could heat an entire mess tin of stew. 
In some cases, soldiers even modified old ration tins into double-walled versions, the early ancestors of what we now call rocket stoves, a design still considered one of the most efficient in the world. Because of its low smoke output, the trench stove was safer to use under cover. British snipers and signal units often used them at night to warm rations without giving away their position. It was quiet, clean-burning, and light enough to carry in a bread bag. Ah, this World War I survival principle isn't just a historical curiosity. It's a lesson in resourcefulness, if you will. You can still build a stove based on the same design today with, well, almost no tools at all. Start with two metal cans, one slightly smaller than the other. The outer can, you see, becomes the body, and the inner can acts as the burn chamber. Punch several small holes around the base of the outer can for air intake, and one or two larger ones on the upper rim for exhaust. Then. Insert the smaller can, fill it with a compact fuel source, dry twigs, wax paper, or even a mix of candle wax and sawdust, and light it from the bottom. Within a minute, you'll notice the same efficient draft that World War I soldiers depended on. A clean, hot flame that concentrates upward instead of spreading outward. Quite ingenious, isn't it? Now, this simple design, often called a hobo stove or tin stove after the war, remains a favourite among survivalists and preppers because, well, it requires no commercial fuel. In fact, some field survival instructors still teach the Tommy Cooker principle. That fire control is more important than firepower, you see. The goal isn't to make a big flame, it's to make a smart one. Fascinating, really, how these old principles continue to find relevance today. If you're ever caught without a modern stove, knowing this technique could mean the difference between hypothermia and a hot meal. It's efficient, reusable, and works in rain, wind, or snow with minimal smoke. After the war, the trench stove faded into obscurity as mass production of liquid fuel and pressurised stoves took over. But, you know, the science behind it never disappeared. Its descendants, the Esbit stove, the rocket stove, and even some ultralight backpacking models, still use the same airflow and fuel principles perfected by soldiers a century ago. What made the World War I stove special wasn't its material or appearance. It was the mindset behind it. In a world stripped of comfort, men used scraps, soot, and, well, ingenuity to create warmth where there was none. That spirit of self-reliance is the real survival lesson. Whether you're a historian, a survivalist, or just someone fascinated by forgotten ingenuity, the trench stove stands as proof that human creativity burns brightest when the world goes dark. The World War I survival stove was more than a tool. It was a symbol of endurance. It showed that with enough understanding of nature and a few simple materials, you can create heat, food and hope even in the worst conditions. If this piece of forgotten fieldcraft sparked your curiosity, subscribe to In the Beginning for more deep dives into wartime survival methods, field ingenuity, and the tools that shaped human resilience. Share this with fellow history buffs and outdoor enthusiasts. Because, honestly, the lessons that kept soldiers alive in the mud of the Great War still matter for anyone who values skill over gear.